Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Frostbite Tribe. In the last episode, the Battle of the Balance Bear officially began when our group of warrior siblings decided to search for something a little bit more substantial to eat. Now Freckles the Balance Bear only has 20 days left on her life, so I think within the next couple of days we should be seeing a giant feast for our entire tribe. And just in time too because little Goji grew up back here, and we're hoping that he is going to be able to usher in a new era of digging trunked creatures. He's actually going to breed with our lovely Snowdrop over here, our beautiful queen, because she is showing the digging trunk and their uh, immunity genes line up perfectly. That was the only match that we could choose with the a digging trunk in their genetics and I think it'll actually work out because this should make it a little bit more likely for us to receive it. The only question is whether Goji is going to uh, end up passing his short snout along over the digging trunk but I think there's probably a very very good chance that we'll see some tiny elephant babies in the nest in this episode. Hopefully anyway and we probably want to bring her back toward him the stump pretty soon because that is where we usually set up all of our nests. But first... First things first, we do need to um, take a look at the food situation. We are running dangerously low, despite the fact that we did start banishing some of our creatures. So it's definitely important as we continue to whittle away at the balance bear that we also gather up all of the shells in the water, all of the bunny meat, and that is exactly what Mulberry and Flurry set out to do. So let's have uh, Mulberry go ahead and gather up her meat that she collected in the last episode, her shells over here, and all of the shells that the uh, Krabbits are guarding as well. It seems like they are definitely attracted to the shells in the water, which isn't a bad thing for us because that makes it a little bit easier to find them. So maybe Mulberry and Flurry will be able to take some crab at meat over to our warriors because I'm sure they're going to need um, some extra energy pretty soon. Pine has still been searching for shells of her own. She did um, collect a whole bunch of shells back here with a nip before he got a little bit too impatient and he decided to um, help out his sisters. Though he did a pretty good job too. He was making these little uh, hidey holes inside the side of the mountain so they wouldn't get hurt by the balance bear. And uh, likewise, um, I think Avalanche is probably going to get hit on this turn. It looks like she can't really move far enough away to um, save herself. Though we do want her to move instead of hitting the bear because we don't want her to get hit twice. So let's put her right here next to um, her siblings. So she's inside the snow apparently, inside the snow mound. Maybe that means that the balance bear won't actually notice her. I have a feeling it probably knows exactly where she went, but just in case, maybe we'll get lucky. Let's have Pine move up here so she'll be able to help out too, because I'm sure she doesn't really appreciate being left out. And then we can return to our harvesters and try to uh, clear out some of the snow. We did have a pretty major snowstorm before, so that's why there is so much snow on the mountainside. I mean, I'm feeling a little bit bad for Ruby and Corella, the two that we um, pushed out of the pack because I'm assuming they're probably underneath the snow somewhere, though maybe they made it to the shore. They may have even set up camp on this tiny little island or something, or maybe they went off somewhere else. Who knows? Who knows? They might be finding their own lives on different islands, but either way, I'm sure they're enjoying the uh, freedom, the new found freedom that we have. Now, it is very hard to spot the uh, roots in the ground when there's so much snow, but I think we do have one like right here. What tile is that? It's like right over here just about. So if we could move um, Snowdrop over to this space, we should be able to dig it up. There we go. And then we could move her right back over to um, the stump so that she'll be able to set up a nest on the next turn. We also need to make sure that we're keeping all of our creatures huddled together. That's kind of been the issue with um, the balancing, for me at least, on the mountainside, because it's hard to tell if you should send your creatures out to hunt or keep them together so they're warm. If they're cold after all, they're going to freeze and take damage, and that wouldn't really do us any good for our hunters, because they wouldn't be able to chase down the bunnies then. I haven't seen any bunnies since though, and I think it's because the snow is just a little bit too high. Though maybe if we send a couple creatures out to kind of try to find those burrows, we have one way over here and over here as well. I think that's uh, where most of our burrows are. We do have one right over here too, but it's completely surrounded by snow. And it doesn't really seem like there's much on the uh, very top of the mountain, aside from all of these hot springs. Though this was where Bunny Kingdom was before. So maybe it would be worthwhile after all to bring Rala up here too. She can help protect all of her siblings and we'll see if we can find anything worthwhile at the top of the mountain. Oh, look at that. We already uncovered one 
one of the bunny burrows, so maybe it'll be easier for them to spawn in the future? And I think we must be on top of um, a stump. Let's see if we can maybe clear this out. Yeah, there we go. There is a stump right next to him, the bunny burrow. Despite the fact that we have already explored this mountain without any snow, now that the snow has covered everything, it is very, very hard to remember where all of those uh, little resources were. But we're getting there. We're slowly but surely clearing this place out. As long as it doesn't decide to snow again, that would be um, a little bit disastrous for us. Let's move Koanais down here so she can at least pick up some of the snow. And then Thistle could actually do the same. He could help out his mother by clearing out that path. We should be able to move her back up to the throne though because now all of the newest additions to uh, this side of the mountain are going to make their way into the territory. Fawn, of course, doesn't move very well because she does have the uh, frog toes that her mother had. So she's probably going to be one of these stationary creatures that stays by the side of the colder ones. She could probably dig up a couple of um, those tasty roots too if they pop up by the nest. But otherwise, she's going to be watching after the babies, I think. Now let's see if we could possibly have them breed. Just so we're ready with a baby. And it does look like that works, so that's good. We'll have her um, plop down a nest on the very next turn. Now Amethyst, meanwhile, she does have the big body and the medium tail, so she should be able to venture out a little bit further too. She doesn't really have any way of uh, collecting things though because she doesn't have the cracker jaw, she doesn't have the nimble fingers, so she is more meant for maybe um, crabbit hunting or bunny hunting. And in fact, let's bring her around the shore so she will be able to find these crabbits. There we go. Unfortunately, oh, was that Corella? I think that may have actually been Corella or a completely new creature, so we're keeping our eye on you. I would love to see Corella again. We've only seen Ruby so far, so I was a little bit worried about her. But um, if that's Corella, then at least we know she's okay. But yeah, we do need somebody else down here to um, help Amethyst out with this crab if she's going to get this one. So we might actually bring her further down the shore to um, help Flurry and Mulberry, which wouldn't be such a bad thing anyway, because then they would be traveling in three and we wouldn't have to worry about them getting too cold. But that is all of the uh, energy that we have for today. So let's go back over here and see if a uh, poor little avalanche who kind of looks like she's been stuck in an avalanche is going to get hit by this balance bear. I think it can get close enough. Oh, but it didn't see you? It actually didn't see avalanche. And not only that, but it does seem like the snow is finally melting. So that's a good thing. That is a relief because we desperately need the snow to melt so we can get around a little bit easier. That also means that it's getting um, warm too, so I guess we won't have to worry as much as before about the freezing issue. But now Freckles only has 17 days left on her lifespan, so let's go to town. We might actually be able to completely take care of her if we play this right. Let's see, do we need to move her away? I mean, 13 days left. Honestly, we should be doing about um, two to three points of damage each time we hit. Freckles has two points in defense, so it takes off um, two of those strength points, but our creatures are so strong with their fives and their fours that we are really giving Freckles a run for her money. So let's see if we can use this turn to conquer her once and for all. Avalanche will use her last turn on the balance bear and then Fang can go to town too, just slapping away. And then I think we might be able to have Nip jump in here and land the killing blow. Look at all of that meat. Oh my gosh, we are going to have a feast, a giant, giant feast. It is just going to keep piling up inside our stores and that is exactly what we needed to sustain this brand new population that we're hoping to uh, attain over here. It's good too because we have gotten quite a few um, new males in the tribe. So now they should all be able to start their own families 76 pieces of food, excellent. So we are doing much better than we were before and then you guys could actually um, help us out too by hopefully picking off some of these crabbits. If we can move you around this side maybe? Did something scoot into the water? Was that a bunny? Oh my gosh, look at all of those leeches. Okay, maybe we don't want you to be inside the water, Mulberry. I'm sorry for wasting your turns, but that's um, a little bit worrying. I guess we'll just have you guys start making your way uh, down the shore like we were planning, and you can meet up with Nip and all of his sisters, his brave warrior sisters who completely took down this balance bear basically by themselves. He did a land the uh, killing blow, but they did all the work, so I'm sure Anamim is looking down on them very proudly right now. Since it is so warm though, let's 
actually have Thistle come down here and um, help out Amethyst with this Crabbit. We can have them take turns, hopefully smacking the Crabbit. There we go, and gather up some of that meat as well. So we are slowly but surely rising toward those uh, 100 pieces of food again. Now, where did Corella go? Was that actually Corella? If it was uh, her, then she has moved on, it seems, into the darkness, so I'm not sure exactly where she ran off to. And I don't think Ruby is around here either, because it doesn't seem like we can uh, hear anything, we can't smell anything, though there might be. Oh, I thought that was a bunny. It's just a little twig bush, so that's not something that we really need to worry about right now, because we do have just enough nesting material for a two nests. And look at this, we're placing a nest right on top of all of those lovely clovers again. You may have been born in a nest with clovers, in fact, if I remember correctly. Or at the very least, that technique has been passed down throughout the generations so that all of the babies are nice and cozy warm as they're born. So for their mutation menu, of course, we are going to have to take a, a very close look at the hind legs because he also received the uh, webbed hind legs, which really isn't going to help us on the mountainside. That's definitely not um, suited for mountain hopping anyway. So let's place that in the 30% slot and then the big body in the 10% slot because both both of them also do have the medium body, so we want to try to pull out the big body from their inactive traits. Hopefully that's going to work. And do we have uh, any little roots for her to dig up by any chance? Not by these nests. So we might actually want to um, move somewhere else, wherever the roots happen to be, wherever they're spawning, though we're going to have to wait for the uh, snow to melt a little bit more, I think, because they are dreadfully hard to see. We actually did have some permanent nests over on this side of the mountain, I believe. So now might be a good time for us to try to um, unbury them because we can't see them at all at the moment. So Koanais could join some of uh, her family up here too and they could see if they could possibly uncover that old camp. Luckily, the snow has melted just enough that we don't actually have to um, pick it up or shovel it out before we can move. And look at all of these bunny burrows that we're uncovering now. Excellent. So there were quite a few buried bunny burrows and that's probably why they're so scarce right now. Let's move Silver right on top of uh, this stump here so we can see a little bit better. Since we are moving into um, uncharted territory, technically, we do want to make sure there's nothing dangerous lurking out here too. I don't see the uh, permanent nest just yet, but that doesn't mean much because they could be buried under any of those mounds. Now we want Goji to stay right next to um, his new babies, of course, and we want Fawn to stay here too to keep everyone warm and safe so she'll settle herself right between the two proud parents. And otherwise, we just have you two back here. I mean, you guys might as well start shoveling out the area too. You can climb up the mountain, see if you can find any good spaces for um, potential nests, I suppose. That might be a good idea because we do have Nip here so he could start a family as well. This might be just the right place for this family to settle down since they did take out the balance fair there and they have a giant feast to eat. But otherwise, let's see if this baby will manage to inherit that lovely digging trunk. I certainly hope so. Oh my gosh! The gills? What? It's like a blue baby too on top of it. The gills, way to throw me for a loop animeme. Okay, so let's see what this baby looks like. I mean, she is adorable. She is absolutely gorgeous. I love that bluish body that she has, I guess because of the gills and the pink ram horns too. How cute is she? She even has the double claws. So she should be able to dive into the water and hopefully find some fish though. In all honesty, I don't think we've seen any fish here so far. So she might want to um, move on to a new island of her own at some point to try to find some fish because I'm not sure if the gills is really the best mutation to have on the mountainside, but honestly, why? Why the gills for this family of all of the families that could possibly mutate them? We are looking for that digging trunk animeme. Maybe Splash was feeling neglected because he doesn't often get um, a lot of attention in the tribe, even though he's kind of, I guess, the uh, god of the water. He was our first gill creature anyway, so I wouldn't be surprised if he had a little bit of a hand in this too. But let's name her Lavender. And then um, I think I saw... Oh geez, another balance bear over here. And all of these bunnies too hopping out of their burrows at just the wrong time because this balance bear is probably going to have his eyes locked on you. Do we have anything else to worry about too? Let's just uh, sniff around, let's listen around. I think that's um, the only major concern right now. So what are we going to do with you? We don't want you getting near um, all of our babies over here. Are we going to have to sacrifice our creatures again, just like Comet? And 
now that it's snowing too, like just as we were moving out, just as we were getting ready to explore, it has started to snow again, so it's probably going to get quite cold. At the very least, we can have Silver jump over here and grab this bunny for us. And then I suppose Brave Rala is going to have to um, use her double claws to get the attention of this bear, because we want it to follow her instead. So um, go ahead and slap the bear and then move off of this way. Hopefully with the twig bush in the way, it'll have to um, go around and it'll spend too much time walking to actually hit her. But honestly, we need her to um, get down to the shore along with all of these other creatures. So Ko and I East and Nettle are both going to have to lead her down um, through all of this snow. We might be able to set up a Nettle right on top of here too, just to see a little bit more. And there's some more bunnies. More bunnies, more shells, more leeches, of course, and even more of those crabbits guarding the shells like usual. I do see a little shell right underneath you, little guy. But let's leave Koanais right here so she'll be able to um, help Arala continue to make a path just in case the snow really starts to pile up and just in case she gets uh, blocked by that balance bear too. So you guys are going to have to work together very, very shortly. Now you back here, we can still make another nest. So let's do just that. Let's move you right over to this side so you're still right next to your little baby, keeping lavender warm. And then Goji can use his energy to um, breed with her, hopefully. There we go. So she can still place down her nest. Now, um, Fawn is still going to stay in the area, but she might be able to, there we go, dig up some tasty roots. Excellent. She won't be able to breed with Goji because she does have a similar immunity gene, I believe. Yeah, immunity gene D because their father was Kiro, so he passed that along to them. Thistle, on the other hand, might work for her because their immunity genes line up nicely. And then we could possibly pull those uh, Megaloceros horns out of her genetics and maybe even get them on a brand new baby too. So why don't we have Thistle return back to his family and a wave goodbye to Amethyst as she keeps making her way down the shore. Oh, there you are, Corella. It is you. She has lost a little bit of her life in the meantime, I think, so she may have uh, found her own little bit of trouble out here, but she seems to be doing very, very well with her double claws. I mean, she's certainly strong enough to hold her own on the mountainside, so hopefully she's been uh, keeping track of Ruby, too, wherever she happens to be. It does seem like she wants to leave for the killer island, actually. Maybe she's um, scoping the place out, trying to figure out if that's where she should go. Oh my gosh, and Ruby, we were just talking about you. Oh, Ruby, she must have heard Corilla's call to investigate those ports. Now, aside from the crabs and the leeches, do we have uh, anything else for you guys to pick up? Just some very, very dangerously placed shells, I think. So we're going to have you guys uh, skip that because I don't want you getting a ton of leeches attached to you. We'll have them uh, join up with all of our warrior siblings. And actually, it might be a good idea to um, bring them up the mountainside because we do have these stumps up here. We have the hot springs. So that might be a good place to um, potentially settle down and start a family, especially because I believe um, Nip and Mulberry are also a pretty good match. The one thing I'm worried about is the hemophilia because they both do have those traits and we don't want our warrior family having a hemophilia of all things. That would definitely not help them. But let's try to clear out some of the snow so we could um, potentially make some nests up by the hot springs. We could even have Anasi use uh, this throne to scope out the area and find the bunnies. Excellent. So we do still have some bunnies at the very top of the mountain. Let's um, listen around too and sniff around. I think we just have that balance bear way back there to worry about. Thankfully, nothing at the top of the mountain, just the bunnies. So we should be okay. And this was where um, all of those rocks were too, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Apparently, we can hear the rocks. We can't smell the rocks, but we can hear them inside the snow. So if anything does come stumbling up the mountainside, hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to position ourselves so it can't hit us. Now that's all of our safe moves taken care of, so we have two situations to watch here. We want to see if this baby of course, we'll have the digging trunk aside from uh, those gills. That is still like mind-blowing. Gills of all things in this family. Little Lavender has gills. So we'll see if the digging trunk pops up there, but I do want to see if Amarala um, is going to not only get hit, but also manage to drag the balance bear away from our babies. Because if it starts uh, going this way, then we're going to have a little bit of a tougher situation on our hands. There we go. Rala has succeeded. She managed to grab the balance bear attention. The one problem is that we don't actually have um, a creature with the poison fangs over here to poison the bear. So this one is going to be a little bit trickier for us to take care of. And um, let's see, how about this baby? Do you have the little digging trunk? Oh my gosh, I think you do. She's a little spotty elephant. 
Oh, how cute is that? So yes, this is going to be our brand new era of the digging trunk, which is excellent just in time because that should really help us gather up some extra food for this tribe too. Let's see what you look like in here. Oh my goodness, she has the same color ram horns too as um, her sister, I believe. The exact same color, just a little bit different because of those gills. So it seems to give her entire body like a blue overcast, but not this little baby. And I think we'll uh, name her Violet to go right alongside her sister. So Violet and Lavender. And hopefully they'll have another digging trunk baby so they can all roam the mountainside looking for those uh, tasty roots. First though, first things first, Pine needs to chase down this bunny and grab it up for us. There we go. We need the extra meat, especially with all of these brand new mouths to feed. And then we could have um, little Lavender scoot her way out of the nest for the very first time. So we could have just uh, one more baby between Goji and um, Snowdrop. And we'll see if hopefully maybe this one will even be a male. We have had some a pretty decent luck with the males so far, so hopefully that will be the case. Let's have Rala go ahead and uh, slap the balance bear again just to make sure that we still have its attention. We need its attention after all, and I think she could even slap it a second time so she can scoot way down here out of its reach. Amethyst has gotten a bit more secluded than I would like because um, she has quite a ways to go before she meets up with Mulberry and Flurry, but maybe that's because she was spending so much time talking to Corella and Ruby. I would imagine that is probably the case, and oh no, she's just out of energy to grab that bunny. That's too bad. At least she managed to find it though. Maybe she can chase it toward the rest of the group. I wonder if uh, she's considering joining Corilla and Ruby too. Maybe she's another one who would like to um, leave and find her own place in this world somewhere on a different island. But for now, let's see. We probably want to um, continue clearing out this area or at least finding more bunnies. Let's see if we have any others on top of their burrows. Yeah, we definitely do. Way over here inside all of these rocks. Really, little bunny, you have positioned yourself very, very well with your home. We're going to have to um, go around all of the rocks to um, even get to you. So Nip and Anasi might be able to do just that if they circle around this way. They're going to have to work together playing leapfrog though. Let's have her jump up to the top of the mountain and there's the bunny right there. I think Nip can just barely grab it and even find another one. I think I did see one dart into the snow as it was uh, munching on all of its clovers. Let's see, there you are little guy. So can we actually have Silver grab you? It looks like Silver's movement is a little bit too slow, but we can have her go in that direction. Well, there are tons of bunnies out here. That's good to see, and I think we actually tricked this one. Excellent. So, um, Silver, because she has the gray fur, actually blends in a little bit better with her surroundings. That's probably why she's such an apt bunny hunter. So she should be able to gather us a plenty of food as we're trying to find more balance bears to conquer. Let's go back to Snowdrop's family to see what her next little baby is going to look like. Hopefully, it will also have that lovely ding trunk that Violet managed to inherit. Let's see. Oh, you actually look like your father. Oh, that's interesting. So all of their babies have been completely different. And not only that, but he also has the double claws. So he is a little beast, a tiny little beast, just like all of our warriors all across the island. I think Anamim would be quite proud of us. It seems like a lot of our deities are really watching over this tribe, in fact. Meme and uh, maybe Vankir in the digging trunk. We have Splash, the very, very unexpected twist in um, Lavender. And then I wonder if maybe Comet, the um, god of sacrifice, as a lot of you wanted to call him, is watching after this group right now as they're leading the spare away, just like he did at the very end of the Fernleaf Islands. So in the next episode, we'll have to see if their brave little group will be able to defeat the balance bear like our warriors or if they'll meet the same fate as Comet out on the snowy shores. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!